Hey, aloha, and welcome to Mina, Marco, and me on Energy. I'm Stan Osterman, sitting in for Jay Fidel, my twin brother, uh, on my lunch hour. So if you're having trouble distinguishing between me and Jay, I'm the one with facial hair. He's five by five, I'm five and a half by five and a half. But, you know, hey, we're both energy guys, so who cares? So my co-host today, and I guess my regular host and on this show, um, are giving us details on making renewable energy a reality. And it's Mina Marita and Marco Mengelsdorf coming to us from the beautiful town of Hilo. The title of our show today is Cost Effective Renewables or Renewables at All Costs. And Mina and Marco are going to help me sort through the way ahead as we try to make renewables the prime source of energy in Hawaii. So welcome uh, via the, the wonders of technology, Mina and Marco. I'm glad I get to sit in here and chat with you because I love energy stuff and um, I'm looking forward to our 100% renewable here. But some recent happenings in the PUC is what we're really focused on and we're gonna, first going to talk about the uh, Huonua uh, over on the Big Island. So Marco, why don't you kind of fill us in on what you know. It's pretty late breaking so I know you're still sorting through some of the details on the Huonua projects over there on the Big Island. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Stan, for uh, filling in for Jay, and uh, greetings to you on this uh, sunny month noon here from beautiful Hilo, and it's always fantastic to be back with my dear friend Mina Marita. So, yes, we had some pretty big news from uh, the PUC on Friday when they announced that they were approving a power purchase agreement between Hawaii Electric Light Company, Helco, and Huhonua, Huhonua has been uh, trying to revivify the power plant, which for years and years was Hilo, Hilo Coast Power Company uh, that burned coal up until uh, a number of years ago when they shut down and Huonua was planned was to restart the plant using uh, Big Island produced biomass uh, in, the, in the form of uh, eucalyptus trees which grow along the Hamakua coast. And the uh, decision in order that came out on Friday uh, was essentially uh, an approval, a uh, stamp of approval from the commission uh, of the uh, modified and amendment, amended power purchase agreement, which was submitted to the commission only just uh, two some months ago back in May. So they really did it in record time as far as reviewing and uh, coming to a decision and their decision to approve uh, essentially uh, was based on their belief that the levelized cost of energy, the levelized cost of electricity to uh, Big Island electric ratepayers would actually go down a little, a little amount over the course of, I believe, the 30-year term of the power purchase agreement. So, in a nutshell, they saw enough upside or more upside than downside uh, to bring more renewable energy online here for the Big Island in terms of power generation and we're willing to uh, accept that according to the projections uh, proposed or given to them uh, where electric rates would actually go up, would go up over the first I believe 11 years of the contract, they were persuaded that over the 30 year length of the contract that the rates for the rate pairs would actually go down a bit and again you know, that's um, with a full understanding that uh, the cone of uncertainty in terms of projecting costs beyond a few years, once you start getting to five, beyond five, 10, 15, let alone 30 years, there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty in terms of what energy costs will be at that time. But all, all that being said, using whatever reasonable assumptions they, they used, they projected uh, that, or they decided that on the whole, this was a, uh, an agreement, a power purchase agreement that was going to be more beneficial than detrimental to Big Island ratepayers. Mm. And, and this uh, plant, is, is that the one in Onaka? No, you're, uh, you're thinking of Hamakua Energy Partners, or HEP. That is a fossil fuel burning plant. It's, I believe, the largest generation a uh, single generation generator on the island and that is uh, in Honoka and that's owned by a mainland company by the name of Arclight. Mm. So Hilo Coast Power Company now who Honua is in Pepe Keo. So it's uh, it's not as far as Honoka. It's uh, I don't know 15 minutes or so outside of Hilo. 
Okay, so it's still close enough to all the trees because they're mostly in the Hamakua area, not too far from Hilo, and the power generation is actually closer to most of the users then. Correct. Okay. So, Mina, what do you get from the Huonua um, approval? Are you optimistic that um, they're going to be able to stick with the sorry, pricing? Steve, you're cutting out, cutting on and off on me. Hey, uh, Mina, are you still there? Yes, I'm here, oh. and you're cutting in and out of me, um, too. Okay. Um, could but you tell us what just, um, just, what you think about the, the approval by the PUC? I mean, we're just, we both just got copies of the decision and order um, this morning, and um, within the last hour, so been looking at it real quickly. I guess some of my concerns is that the original PPA that was approved had a low co low fixed cost component and a high variable that was to the advantage of the rate payer and um, low risk to the rate payer. And with this new revised amended revised PPA, there's a high fixed component and a low variable, which is higher risk for the rate payer. Uh, how, did, how does, that's, that's you know, I mean. two cents that I've gotten out of this so far. Okay, Mina, you've got the time on the PUC. How would, how would a change like that come in at kind of like the 11th hour? I don't think it was so much the 11th hour. This has always been the proposal. And I think that's what the concern coming from the consumer advocate was, that you know, you sh you're shifting the risk from the developer to the rate payer by, um, by this high cost, high fixed cost component. And uh, so, I, you know, my gut feeling tells me this isn't very favorable to the rate payer overall. Hmm. Well, maybe they can switch to Albizia trees and make the rate go down. I'm not sure. Because they got plenty of those on the Big Island, too. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's switch gears and talk about the um, power supply improvement plans that uh, the utility companies have uh, also gotten approved recently. Um, Mina, what do you think about uh, what's come out in those so far? I'm sorry, Stan. You cut out on. You're cutting out on me. Yeah. What do you think of the the uh, PSIPs that have recently been approved? Yeah, I'm not hearing anything either, Stan. I'm not okay. hearing what you're saying. I don't, I'm not sure why it's cutting out on on. The, I don't hear any issues with you. You folks are coming through just fine for me. But I was asking about the PSIPs that have just been approved about two weeks ago by the Public Utilities Commission. And if we can get any comments from... Uh, Marco, why don't you start off with your thoughts on the PSIP? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, it's still, of course, a work in progress. Uh, I mean, this uh, decision was handed down on July 14th, so uh, two plus weeks ago. and. The, uh, the commission, uh, I think, was uh, suffering from some degree to a piece of fatigue in that uh, this process had been, uh, the piece of process had been underway. And going back to when Mina was chair of the, uh, the commission, going back to 2014, and the, the commission approved the, 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 the last iteration of the piece of with a number of notable caveats uh, because uh, I think that uh, it, was, it was time to move forward uh, one way or the other and they, they commended the HECO companies on their uh, more near-term focus which I think uh, is, is worthy of uh, commendation and uh, kind of interestingly something that hasn't received much play in the media aside from a piece in the Pacific Business News, a uh, day or so after the, the, the DNO on the power supply improvement plan, there hasn't been much discussion uh, of what the projected increase in, in electric rates will be over the next uh, five and ten years uh, across the HECO, MECO, and NHELCO service territories, and, and they're not insignificant. They're anywhere 
from uh, for Helco, if I remember correctly, is 25 percent, 25 percent increase in in rates just over the next five years, and 42 some odd percent over the next 10 years. And uh, the commission seems to be clearly concerned about um, about rates going up. And then Chairman Randy Awase has been quoted repeatedly over the past months as being focused on uh, the lowest cost of energy, bringing on the new, the, the new generating sources, generation sources being brought on, especially renewables, of course, uh, at the lowest possible cost. That's why it is uh, head, kind of head scratching to me that this same commission would turn around and approve the who ho knew of our purchase agreement at an all in cost that is uh, that is twenty two cents a kilowatt hour. So I'm I'm a little bit puzzled, uh, perhaps more than a little bit, about how there can be this focus, uh, stated focus, repeated focus on lowest possible cost, and yet the uh, this recently approved PPA for Huho Nua is not at the lowest possible cost. But that said, uh, it's, it's having quickly, along with Mina, trying to digest this, uh, the DNO that we just received in the past hour. So the commission makes clear towards the end of the DNO that the commission concludes that the levelized rate should not be the sole factor to be used in determining whether projects should be approved. So, I mean, which makes perfect sense, of course, that it shouldn't be the sole factor. Uh, so, then they also put a benefit on the fact that uh, that biomass being burned in a combustion plant provides firm dispatchable renewable, re renewable energy and will provide, quote, ancillary services as well. So I guess to kind of try to tie this in, these two decisions with the, the PSIP and the DNO is that uh, in principle, the desire is to bring on the lowest cost possible new renewable energy generation, but in practicality, that is not the sole determinant, and, and nor should it be, nor should it be, but it just is kind of wild that you have this juxtaposition of two decision and orders over the course of two weeks, one issued on the 14th, which is the PSIP, you know, and then the other issued on the 28th, this last Friday, which is the who will new decision in order. And it's kind of interesting to see how the lines either disconnect or, or converge. Hey, Marco, do you think that might be tied to the um, base load power versus intermittent renewable uh, in some way? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that there is a, a benefit that should be factored in in terms of providing a premium for being able to, to have firm power, which biomass can do and which solar PV with storage at this point is not available to provide. I mean, the, the folks at KIUC are pushing the boundaries with their battery storage for this, the plant that was installed by Solar City and Tesla and also the new one going in by AES. But that's dispatchable power of five or six hours, which is not the same as firm power over a 24-hour period. So I get that there is a benefit, certainly, that should be quantified for having firm dispatchable renewable energy. But to what extent it's justified to approve, uh, a, you know, it's a subjective determination how much of a benefit, how much of a premium should firm dispatchable renewable energy demand in terms of remuneration to the, the power provider. So I'm kind of like, really like yeah. to hear what Mina has. And I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break yeah, here. And come, when we come back, we'll get Mina's take on, uh, on the uh, PSIP. All right, we'll be back in 60 seconds.
everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, welcome back to Mina, Marco, and me. I'm not Jay today, I'm Stan, but I'm like Jay. Almost as good, but he's smarter, better looking, more talented. Anyway, thanks uh, for being with <laughs> Mina and Marco and me. And we left off talking about the um, power improvement plans that were just improve, approved by the PUC. And Marco gave us his, uh, his take on it. Now we're gonna get Mina's uh, view on, this, on the issue. Yeah, I, you know, somehow I, I'm feeling that the Huhonua decision is sort of um, counterintuitive to what the, the PSIP decision was, where the, the commission appeared to be very concerned about um, impact to the rate payer, cost impacts to the rate payer, the need for competitive pricing, and also the need for flexible generation. And this, this decision doesn't appear to um, support any of those findings in the PSIP. And what's really curious to me is, you know, the, uh, a facility like Huhonua wasn't even analyzed in, in, in the PSIP, um, so, so, so that's a real head scratcher for me. Um, but, um, but I think, uh, again, you know, what is needed on the Big Island, um, given that the Big Island has so much um, renewable baseload generation in the form of geothermal, for example, and, and really, um, good wind uh, resources is that what it really needs is some kind of storage or more flexible generation. And this Huhonua project being steam generators doesn't give them the, that flexibility that's really needed in the system. Um, so those are some of the quick thoughts um, I have on how does this particular decision fits into the, the PSIP and all the stated concerns in the PSIP. Do you think it's possible to talk to some of the folks on the PUC or these, I mean, these are public hearings generally, um, but the decision making and final decisions, um, are they as transparent as uh, we'd like so that you could actually discern what their thought process was in approving these and, and uh, you know, like you say, it just seems like it's a little bit out of sync with the most recent approval. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of this deals with the contract financials, um, which is being done um, with confidential. The review of those kinds of um, information is confidential, so there's not much transparency here okay. on how they arrive um, in their decision that these costs were reasonable. Okay. Well, as as an outsider to this show, I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch myself a little bit and, and say there was a a bill that was trying to get through the legislature um, last session or maybe the session before, and it kind of shed some light on just what you talked about. What's in the contract, um, and and what's in the uh -huh. contract is is pretty much confidential, and. When I was mm -hmm. on Maui, I asked the folks on Maui how much they were curtailed every day by Miko, and they said, you know, we don't want to say particularly, but it was around 20 and 30 percent every day. And I said, well, why can't you just take that power and like make hydrogen and do, you know, take that mm -hmm. curtailed power and do something else with it? And they said, we can't, but they wouldn't tell me why. And when you get down to it, a lot of that stuff's in the contract that none of us can see. And that's why I'm saying I think the transparency issue here in some of that, I understand the need for privacy in the contracting side and, and 
you know, but it seems to be getting in the way of some of the decisions that are being made. What, what would you say to that, Mina? Yeah, I, I, I know when the hydrogen issue came up before the legislature, I mean, I was still the chair in, in um, more con con in, in being able to use um, excess power production for hydrogen. I think some of my concerns as a, at that time as a regulator was, you know, how how much of this could be pushed off to the rate payer and subsidized by the rate payer when it goes to other uses um, other than the electrical electrical system. So, um, you know, that, that, but those are issues that need to be discussed and we can work through. Um, but, you know, definitely with the amount of confidential information being passed back and forth, um, that, that, that is a concern on, yeah. on how decisions are made. Well, about Marco, um, have you seen this as, a, as, you know, something to be concerned with where, there's certain things in the contract as the as the PUC is looking at um, approving or not approving, where you, you'd kind of like to see more transparency to the public on some of these uh, details in the contract that would de demystify some of the decisions the PUC makes. Well, I'm not in a in the the the, the same type of uh, position uh, in terms of having the expertise to really comment too much on that. And uh, again, based on a really quick read of the 60 some odd page DNO decision in order for who knew it, it seems to me rather transparent uh, in terms of the commission's rationale, their discussion of the various parties' positions from who knew it, Helco, and the consumer advocate that uh, uh, I don't see any uh, lack of transparency there. Uh, I mean, there is stuff. Uh, uh, confidential to the docket, which is not part of the public record, and uh, I, I guess I'm a, of a position I don't know what I don't know mm. as far as whether that's material in terms of making a judgment uh, uh, from the public's perspective. Uh, the, the commission noted that there were 700 public comments, 700 public comments on who Honua. So clearly there was a lot of public interest. Uh, a number of legislators got involved and uh, gave their their thumbs up. Uh, to to moving forward so there was there's been quite a bit of a public discussion and uh one of the the reasons uh, apparently that uh, the the commission thought that this would be an okay thing to do and they note that in the decision order is that the the previous power purchase agreement that uh, became essentially null and void after who knew it was unable to meet a number of milestones and the original ppa was canceled but that all-in cost of the original PPA in 2017 dollars was 28.6 cents a kilowatt hour, 28.6 cents. So I think that they must have played some factor that this amended and revised PPA, which they did improve, did approve, was uh, coming in at 22.1 cents a kilowatt hour, which is clearly a good chunk less than 28.6. Mm -hmm. So again, to go back to your question in terms of transparency, I mean, at least as far as the, this particular decision, uh, issued on Friday, it seems to me that it's uh, it's as transparent as I can tell. Okay, I, I'm gonna. We would need to get on to the next topic, but for a quick uh, a quick check on the process, Mina, does the consumer advocate get a chance to see the contract details if the rest of the public can't, or is it still kind of outside of his uh, purview? Well, the the consumer advocate has access to all confidential material. Okay, great. That's good. Well, if we could do, we've got a couple minutes left, and if we could talk a little bit about uh, energy PV um, uh, projects here on Oahu that were also approved. Any comments there, Marco? Yeah, um, last week was a, a big week in terms of decisions from the commission. So uh, prior to who oh, knew on Friday, day or two prior, the commission approved three utility-scale solar projects for Oahu that had been in play for several years prior to that. These were three projects totaling about 110 megawatts, 110 megawatts worth of, of solar generation on Oahu that were originally awarded to uh, a company called Sun Edison. Sun Edison, which was uh, a global company in terms of uh, renewable energy development, and they 
they declared bankruptcy last year. They collapsed them to themselves. And uh, Hawaiian Electric uh, was concerned about moving forward with uh, Sun Edison or a successor company to Sun Edison. And Sun Edison State was playing in a bankruptcy court. So they essentially, Hawaiian Electric, uh, ECO, canceled or decided not to move forward with those projects with Sun Edison or uh, the uh, the wannabe uh, successors to those projects, the project developers. And uh, Hawaiian Electric took a fair amount of flack from multiple parties for uh, for canceling that project and not moving forward. And now uh, I, I happen to think that their decision was, was the right thing at the right time. And I believe that decision has been vindicated in that uh, – they are moving forward with another big uh, energy development company called NRG based in Texas to go ahead and move forward with these three projects at pricing, uh, reduced pricing compared to the original Sun Edison contract between 10.4 and 11.4 cents a kilowatt hour, which were uh, all these for the three projects uh, cheaper than the original Sun Edison project. So I, I think it's a win win for uh, both Hawaiian Electric and, more importantly, a uh, win for uh, Oahu ratepayers who uh, will be getting uh, cheaper power from uh, from solar. That is a that is a really good yeah, price. I, I got to agree. So, Mina, you got the last word for the last minute. Go ahead, Mina. So, so Marco, it's only a win if if there's economic dispatch, right? That that these cheaper um, PPAs can come online and not be curtailed by, um, for example, the net meter projects, which the utility will have no control over to curtail. Right. Yeah. So are you? So, so are you, I mean, so I mean, th there are some technical challenges here because where we have cheaper power here. Because it's curtailable, it'll probably get curtailed by um, the net metered projects um, in, in the long run, unless there's some, some way to control the net metered projects and move more towards economic dispatch. So you're saying that these 110 megawatts worth of generation, when they come online, that there will or maybe times during the day when the output of that 110 max will be something less than that max based on the need, the system operators need to throttle it back because of largely beyond their control, NEM systems which are feeding to the, feeding into the grid. Is that, am I interpreting you correctly? Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I just hope that uh, the system does what's what's right for the ratepayers and doesn't just lean too far towards uh, indiscriminate, you know, curtailing of power or limiting what um, what those companies can do if they have curtailed power. Maybe letting them look at other ways to to use that power and, and generate revenue, whether it's store it and put it back in the grid or uh, whatever. But anyway, right. I'd like to thank Mina and Marco for today's show. This has been a complex topic with lots of personalities and moving parts, and there's obviously a lot more to work to do. And it'll take a bunch of experienced folks like you to actually help us get there. So mahalo to you uh, and the studio staff here at Think Tech Hawaii, Ray uh, Sangalang, Sangalang um, the broadcast engineer and floor manager, Robert McLean, and thank you so much for watching Think Tech. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Mina. We'll talk to you thank next you. Monday. Thanks, Dan.